You're probably used to renting a car when you go on a trip somewhere new. But if you're traveling to Ethiopia, that is one step you can skip. So Ethiopia is this beautiful country for tourism, but there are no rental cars available? How does that work? Stay tuned to find out. Five-year-old Chaltu has been suffering since the age of two. When she was just a toddler, a man assaulted her, and she has been plagued with chronic health issues ever since. Chaltu is an only child and lives with her mother. She has never known her father. He disappeared when her mother was pregnant. Chaltu and her mother live in a small one-room house where they share a blanket on the floor as a bed. She's a shy and very sweet girl, and like most children, she's fascinated by technology. She also enjoys playing with her cat. Chaltu has spent most of her life battling chronic illness and hasn't had a lot of time for carefree play. One of our missions teams introduced her to coloring. Chaltu has spent time hospitalized for her health condition. She requires checkups every three months and frequent treatments to keep her condition at bay. The medication that she requires is not readily available in Ethiopia, which complicates her treatment. For more than half of her young life, she has known chronic suffering and discomfort. One bright spot in Chaltu's life is her social worker, Goldie. She loves Goldie like a mother. Chaltu's health issues have interfered with her education when she first started preschool. Although she continues to struggle with her health, she has improved some after a recent medical treatment and is now attending school more regularly. We can certainly pray that her health condition will remain controlled. There are many unique aspects to driving in Ethiopia. Unlike in many parts of the Western world where the majority of citizens own and drive cars and a small percentage of people drive professionally, it is the exact opposite in Ethiopia. Most people in Ethiopia don't own a car or even possess a driver's license. Instead, they walk or they take public transportation. But two of the most common forms of transportation include taking a bus or a bajaj, which is a popular three-wheeled vehicle used for transport around town. Tourists may drive on an international driver's license, but only if they own their own vehicle. So that option won't work for most travelers. Instead, tourists should plan to hire a car that comes with a driver. The price of renting a car and a driver can be very high, up to 200 US dollars per day. Typically, that includes the vehicle, the driver, unlimited kilometers, insurance, taxes, but you have to pay for your own fuel and an allowance to pay for the food and accommodations of the driver. It's also customary to share your meal with a driver at the end of the trip, in addition to providing a tip. Even if car rentals were available to international travelers without a driver, I'm not sure it's an option you would want to consider. There are many road hazards, including people, unmarked speed bumps, and livestock, such as donkeys and goats. Goats? Yes, goats. They like to climb up to the top of the cars. Oh, man. Well, it's also not recommended to drive after dark. Trucks often park overnight in the middle of the road with no lights on. In addition, bandits operate after dark in some of the remote areas. Although Ethiopia has started building some expressways, road conditions can be treacherous during the rainy season on many roadways. Driving in Ethiopia is on the right-hand side of the road. The speed limit is 60 kilometers an hour. That's 37 miles per hour for you speeders out there and in towns and villages, and then 100 kilometers an hour, which is 62 miles per hour outside of town. Seatbelts are required for the driver, but many vehicles don't have seatbelts, and devices like mirrors are more decorative than functional. Oh yeah, and you raise a good point. There's also no traffic lights, so intersections can be wild. I know I would rather be in the hands of a professional while traveling in Ethiopia, so I'm okay with not running my own car. As we mentioned, driving is a profession. This means that schooling is required. We have a student right now, Johannes, who is finishing up his training to become a driver. In addition to providing transportation, drivers also serve as guides and often perform maintenance on their vehicles. Right now, we're gonna take a look around Debrezit from the viewpoint of a hired car.
were excited for Johannes to graduate from driving school and begin his career. Both campuses of the BCI Academy feature a library with a range of educational materials. Today, we're going to take a look inside the Bethlehem campus of the BCI Academy. The Bethlehem campus was acquired in 2017 when another organization moved out of the area. The local government gave Blessing the Children the opportunity to take over the school, as we have demonstrated our ability to run an exceptional school with our Deborah Z campus. Both campuses are located in Deborah Z, a couple miles apart. Here, we can see the librarian. She keeps the books organized and helps the students find the materials that they need. The library features desks and seating that allow students to study alone or in groups. There are also several computer stations available. Teachers may take students to the library and students can also study on their own time. Students also have the opportunity to mentor one another and to help with homework after school. This is especially helpful for students who lack electricity and study space in their homes. I really love the color of the walls and how clean and orderly the library is. It's a great facility and it makes studying appealing, which is so important. Rena Nicola is a soft-spoken 10-year-old girl. She lives alone with her mother, Deminish. Her mother is from Shepe, a small rural city near Deborah Z. She came to live with her brother in Deborah Z when she was in seventh grade. From seventh grade until she was 17 years old, Deminish lived with her brother, working as a servant for a family in Deborah Z and studied school on the night shift. When she was 17, her brother abandoned her to move in with his girlfriend. Deminesh did not have many options, and so she moved in with her boyfriend, Nicola. Nicola went on to be employed by the Ethiopian Defense Company. He earned a good living and was able to support Deminesh and Rena. When Rena was quite young, Nicola was unfaithful to his wife. And when Rena was just five years old, her father was in bed for two years with an illness and passed away when Rena was seven. Until his time of his death, Nicola never informed his wife of his chronic illness. Just a matter of days after Nicola's death, Damanesh began feeling ill and was diagnosed with the same illness. Damanesh is now responsible for raising Rena by herself. She is also sick, which makes it difficult to work, and she does not have an advanced education, so she's unable to make a good living. She currently sells tomatoes, onions, and other vegetables at the side of the road. Damanesh and Rena live in a one-room home and are able to live there because they serve as guards for the owners of the home. They have one mattress on the floor and simple cooking tools. Deminesh sends Rena to school with food in her belly but goes hungry herself. She has recently decided to stop taking her medication and believes she will be healed by drinking anointing water. Deminesh is not open to discussing the issue of medication and her health continues to decline. She stated that Rena can live with her uncle if she passes away. Rena hopes to become a doctor in the future so that she can heal her mother. She told us that she is always sad when her mother is sick. Rena joined our waiting list just a few months ago and has been blessed to receive a sponsorship of 30 US dollars a month, but she needs 60 US dollars more to be fully supported. If you can open up your heart to Rena and provide this needed support, please visit our website at www.blessingthechildren.org or call us at one 269 2719 to begin your sponsorship. Thank you. Due to our track record in Deborah Z, Ethiopia, the local government has awarded us multiple accolades over the past 10 years. In addition, we have received donations from the government as a result of our good standing. That's right. Those donations have included a variety of items, including a vehicle. Most recently, we received shelving, 10 chairs, a few tables, a printer, six school lockers, miscellaneous small office items, and a copy machine. While the items are used, they are new to us and will benefit our operations. We appreciate that the government recognizes our benefit to the local community and does what they can to support our ministry. Speaking of printers, I have an interesting fact to share with our sponsors. Standard printer size in Ethiopia is not eight and a half by 11. So the letters that you receive from the children have to be cut to the size in the US office to fit in a standard envelope. That's right, and we're always careful to check the back for drawings to make sure we don't damage any of your artwork. What can we look forward to next time? We've talked today about driving. Next week, we will join one of the youngest children in our sponsorship program as she takes her first ride in a vehicle. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to see the look on her face. Be sure to check in with us next week, and in the meantime, visit our website and social media, linked in the description box below. Like and subscribe, leave comments and questions. Have a blessed day.